The T-54M3 is a joint Vietnamese-Israeli project which began in 2009 that led to the development of two distinct prototypes with similar characteristics but produced with different budgets. The two vehicles have the same teams behind them. However, in this article, the Israeli T-54M3 and the Vietnamese T-54M3 will be treated as two separate objects. The new MPT main battle tank aims to keep the Vietnamese T-54s and T-55s in service by making them more competitive against vehicles of their generation or more modern ones. A total of three prototypes were produced, one by LPID system and two by the Z-153 Vietnamese industrial plant. After the development phase was finished, three pre-series examples were built, which were practically identical to the finalized serial version. The People's Army of Vietnam PAVN, has requested the upgrade of 305 T-54s and T-55s that are still, as of June 2021, being delivered. Delays have occurred due to the COVID-19 pandemic and bureaucratic problems. Hello and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia Voiced article. I'm your host, Tony, and today I will be covering the T-54M3 modernization projects if you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or Paypal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tang Encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. After the Vietnam War 1964-1975, Vietnam operated a fleet of 70 T-62s, a few thousand T-54 and T-55s, hundreds more Type 59s, and a large number of T-3485s and SU-100s. These were accompanied by a small group of M41 and M48 Patton tanks captured from the US Army and the Army of the Republic of Vietnam Arvin, and returned to service after overhauls. In the following years, due to the high cost of maintaining such fleet of armored vehicles, the number of tanks was reduced to 850 T-54s or T-55s 300 PT-76, 50 T-3485s used for training, and a small number of ASU-85s. The numbers of T-62s and Type 59s remain unchanged. The other vehicles were put in reserve. During the late 1990s, it was decided to try to upgrade the fleet of T-54s and T-55s. Around 2015, purchase negotiations began with Russia for the acquisition of a total of 64 first-hand T-90S and T-90SK, all delivered by February 2019. In 2020, the People's Army of Vietnam announced its intention to buy several T-72P1MS. Vietnam did not have any local options for the development of upgrades for its outdated fleet of T-54, T-55 and Type 59. Thus, it turned to foreign countries. After several attempts with other nations, Vietnam turned to Israel. At an unknown date and an unspecified location in Israel, Vietnamese representatives were presented with an example of the Tiran 5SH. The Vietnamese were impressed by the Tiran 5SH and immediately showed interest in asking Israel to produce an updated T-54 prototype bureaucratic delays and probably some internal resistance from the People's Army of Vietnam slowed down their request. In 2009, Vietnam finally requested a prototype upgrade of the T-54 from LPID system. With the help of NIMDA, LPID started to develop the design starting from the previous Slovenian T-55S1 developed by NIMDA and LPID. In 2010, images began circulating of the Israeli-produced prototype that had been presented to Vietnam a few months earlier. As on the Tiran SH, the Israelis removed the Soviet T-10-T2S and the tank was rearmed with the 105mm cannon M64 L71A L52, also a copy of the Royal Ordnance L7. This was the main armament of the Merkava Siman 1 and 2 tanks. It is probable that some journalists were unaware or ignored the existence of the Israeli-produced cannon. On the left side of the turret, a 16mm C-07 commando mortar was mounted externally. The mortar can be used to fire fragmentation illuminants and smoke rounds. The smoke launcher system mounted on the rear side of the turret is the IMI CL-3030 IS-6 self-screen laying system. 
This system is connected to a laser warning receiver LWR that automatically activates the smoke screen in case a vehicle is illuminated by a laser beam or through the control panel of the tank commander who can activate the system manually. On the roof of the turret is the MAWS-6056B Military Automatic Weather Sensor eDrum SA Animometer of Swiss origin, the same one mounted on the Leclerc MPG. This can be lowered and raised in order to measure the wind speed, wind direction, the ambient temperature, and the atmospheric pressure. At the back, there is a slat armor meant to diffuse heat high-explosive anti-tank warheads with piezoelectric fusing, usually fired from the RPG family of anti-tank rocket systems. Attached on the lower side of the slat armor are the Venus hair ferns, steel chains with steel balls at the end. These chains were also used on the Merkava MBTs and also meant to protect against RPG rounds. At the front, both the hull and the turret are protected probably by self-limiting explosive reactive armor Slera, of the latest generation, very similar to that mounted on the Israeli Merkava Siman 4 or a last generation explosive reactive armor. Composite material skirts were mounted on the sides of the hull to protect the running gear and lower the amount of dust kicked up by the vehicle. Some surfaces of the vehicle, such as the front of the hull and the turret, are covered with anti-reflection coating aesthetically similar to sand on the surface of the tank. This lowers the amount of light reflecting off the surfaces and offers a good grip for the crew climbing into the tank. The vehicle is then painted with low IR paint to decrease the thermal signature. The radio system was replaced with a new one of Russian origin, the compact RF-2050 multi-band system with increased resistance against radio-electronic warfare. Due to the increase in weight, now estimated at 40 to 42 tons, the engine was replaced with a German one. Information is lacking except the power output, which is about 1000 horsepower. This is probably an MTU-881 8-cylinder diesel engine of 1000 horsepower at 2700 RPM, guaranteeing a higher speed than the standard T55 thanks to the additional 200 horsepower. The new engine is connected to a transmission and gearbox of Ukrainian origin, although the data and models are unknown. A driving computer system is also installed, allowing the vehicle to calculate the tilt and the speed of the vehicle. That computer is installed on the driver's position, with a hydraulic power steering system allowing the steering column, brakes, and clutch to be much easier to operate. For the safety of the crew, a fire suppression system was replaced with a new automatic system capable of self-diagnosis, also of Russian origin. The fire control system is a TIFCS3BU, stabilized on two axes, produced by the Spanish Indra Sistemas. The system includes a TSGS54BU laser rangefinder, also stabilized on two axes, and a thermal camera for day and night vision in the 3 to 5 UM or 8 to 12 UM range. The commander has a possibility to see the view from the gunner's optics and in case the gunner is out of action to aim and shoot. Finally, a complex update of the servo mechanism for faster movement was undertaken. The old TDPK or TS optical sights, depending on the tank version, are retained in the remote event that the FCS get incapacitated. All of these upgrades significantly increase the chances of hitting a target at any range, day or night, and in any weather, even on the move. According to Fiat Defense, this new FCS has similar characteristic to that of the more modern T-72 P3. Indra Systemas has specially developed the FCS to take up little space and to be mounted without having to modify the turret structure of several Soviet T-series tanks. The Israeli project was too ambitious for the People's Army of Vietnam, as the price was estimated at between 3 to 4 million dollars per unit. This price was slightly lower than the cost of the T-90S and the T-90KS that the PIVN has in service for some years now. Israel and Vietnam decided to simplify the project by cancelling the adoption of the Royal Ordnance L7 origin gun, partly because Vietnam still has significant stocks of Soviet 100mm ammunition. The adoption of the new gun would have meant the purchase of new ammunition stocks. The thermal sleeve was retained. The side skirts and self-limiting explosive reactive armor also cost too much. 
it was therefore decided to replace the modern Israeli Slera with a less expensive version of Ira, produced by the Vietnamese Institute of Propellants and Explosives, developed after 2009. The development phase of the Vietnamese era ended in 2015-2016, but the first generation weighed too much and barely protected the armored vehicles from RPG-7s. Thus, senior Lieutenant Huang Chung Kien, along with Major Nguyen Phu Hong's team, which had developed the first generation, developed the second generation era, allegedly capable of resisting 9M14 Malyutka ATGMs. The decision to retain the 100mm cannon and use a less expensive era resulted in a decrease in vehicle weight and consequently a modest increase in top speed. To decrease the price even more, the BAVN removed all the equipment considered superfluous, such as the CL-3030 IS-6 smoke launchers, the C-07 commando external mortar, and the 12.7mm NSV, keeping the old DSHKM. It is not known at what exact time the vehicles finished assembly, but the first examples were delivered to training schools. Around April-May 2019, the official delivery to the first armored units took place. On June 26, 2019, the first official firing test took place. This was captured by Vietnamese national defense television cameras. During the show test, the vehicle demonstrated excellent maneuverability and increased engagement power compared to the standard T-54 or T-55 models. The delivery rate was slowed down in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic and due to bureaucratic issues. Vietnam had only ordered 105 FCS from Indra Sistemas to equip the Vietnamese prototypes and three pre-series vehicles, while the other 100 were for production vehicles. As the PAVN order was for 310 units, Vietnam has to order another 205 FCS in different batches from the Spanish company with the relevant spare parts and production time. In late 2020, production resumed at a steady pace. Despite the lack of FCS, the Z-153 plant continued to convert T-54s and T-55s and some are still awaiting FCS before they can be delivered to the army. Dozens of photos of updated T-54s and T-55s flooded the web in early 2021. The conversion of all the 310 vehicles will probably be finished in early 2023. One factor that is often overlooked is the use the PFEN intends for these armored vehicles. Detractors of vehicles such as the T-54M3 and T-55M3 or the Korean Choma often do not consider their role within the army. The People's Army of Vietnam, in case of war with a neighboring nation, plans to use its updated T-54 and T-55s in an infantry support role. They are also intended to support the actions of the more modern T-90S. It is not expected that they will face other tanks. If they do, the new FCS will allow them a much improved chance of hitting the target first, even on the move. The Vietnamese prototypes and production examples are painted in a three-tone camouflage scheme quite common on Vietnamese vehicles. Light green, dark green, and black spots, very suitable for the rainy environments of Vietnam. As mentioned earlier, the tanks were covered with anti-reflection coating and painted with special paint to decrease the thermal signature. On the turret, the symbol of the PAVN, a yellow star in a red circle with yellow border, with the identification number in white, is painted on the side. On the Israeli prototype, 153, the PFN symbol was replaced by a prominent yellow star. The Israeli T-54M3 is a very expensive upgrade to the T-54 and T-55 that makes the vehicle capable of dealing with armored fighting vehicles much more modern than the venerable Soviet tanks. The Vietnamese T-54M3 and T-55M3, on the other hand, are cheaper versions of the Israeli T-54M3. While not nearly as powerful, they mitigate some of the obsolescence of the T-series tanks within the budget of Vietnam and will keep these vehicles in service. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscription. You can find more information relating to this vehicle in the full article which is linked in the description. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these videos, please consider donating on Patreon or Paypal. All of the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, 
Keep us in your sights.